I realize that I'm between you and the beers, so I'll keep it easy. <laughs> Ciao a tutti, I'm Marco Crivellaro, I'm principal engineer at The Zone. I've got more than 20 years experience in the sports tech industry. I'm working in The Zone since 2017 and in the developer experience team since uh, 2020. I'm calling it DX in the next slides. I hope you are all familiar with the DX as a, as a name. So, before we dive deep into the subject of the agenda, I would like to tell you about what the zone is, uh, then give a bit of history of how we got to use Backstage, and then we will look into some technical and cultural learnings. And I'm hoping to give you some suggestions on the way. So, what's the zone? Beside a funny name. The Zone is a global live sports streaming OTT platform. It's present in 11 countries with exclusive rights, such as Italian Serie A, German Bundesliga, and Spanish La Liga. And it's also available in more than 180 countries with global rights, such as UEFA Women Champions League and Boxing Matchroom. The Zone Engineering, Engineering is the part of the organization that builds the Zone platform. It counts roughly 700 engineers uh, distributed across 70 teams working from several countries. The developer experience team uh, is one of the platform teams that uh, provides supports, services, and tools to the rest of the engineering organization. So let's look into a bit of history now. Early in our journey, uh, while implementing the microservice-based architecture of the zone, we found ourselves multiple times in trouble while trying to answer in questions such as which team owns a specific service, what's the, the scope of, the, of such a service, uh, where can we find the code. Uh, we didn't know where to find the documentation, monitoring, uh, so a lot of questions, and we realized that we, want, we needed to build a service directory to answer all of these questions. So one evening, uh, a colleague of mine and I were having a beer in Seattle, and he came with the idea of, uh, of storing all of this information together where the code lived. And this is how the Dazon Manifest came to be. The Dazon Manifest is a YAML metadata file that every engineering team in the zone is required to store in their GitHub repository. And it contains information such as the owner of the repository, which services are deployed from such a repository, dependencies of these uh, services, links to run books, dashboard, SLOs, and many more informations. So we built the foundation uh, that doesn't manifest. Uh, we, the SRE team has built an API around it, and we started to build tooling around it but we never uh, got to the point where we worked on the service directory that we wanted to work on the beginning. So welcome backstage. And this is really the first learning that we have, and it is that it's very likely that a problem that you have has already been solved by someone else. When we first heard about backstage uh, listening to a podcast, we, we were amazed by the fact that it had all the features that we were looking for, if not more. So, it would have been silly for us to not try and use it. Um, so we started the work uh, of implementing Backstage internally in March 2021, and we officially launched it uh, October last year, so we are looking at one year of learnings. So now let's look at some technical learnings. First of all, how do you start? Well, as for most of the things, the best thing that you can do is start small and then build piece by piece. Backstage has a very large quantity of plugins, which keeps growing. It isn't necessarily a bad thing, but sometimes it could be overwhelming, especially at the beginning. Start with what matters the most and then build from there. When we started implementing Backstage at the Zone, we made the mistake of trying to implement all possible plugins that we could think of because we wanted to show all the engineering teams how cool Backstage could have been but that had the result of raising even more questions rather than answering them. So we made a step back and we focused on the software catalog, then we introduced tech docs, and only recently we started looking at the scaffolder. You also want to use what you know and keep it simple. Backstage is pretty flexible, and you don't, you don't necessarily have to run it in a Kubernetes cluster, although we are at KubeCon, so I shouldn't say that. 
uh, you can you use what you know. Um, for instance, in the zone, we deploy our services in AWS ECS Fargate. So we decided to do the same with Backstage and use what we already learned, uh, what we already know. And uh, we are uh, building a single container image that serves both the front end and the back end via an AWS application load balancer. We are offloading the authentication to the application load balancer, which is connected uh, to uh, Azure Active Directory using OpenID Connect. And we store uh, the, into the database RDS Postgres. So pretty simple. Also, don't be afraid to get your hand dirty. Backstage has a lot of features, we all know that, but sometimes you need to do something uh, that may not be already available in Backstage. To give you an example, we use uh, AshiCorp Vault to store our, uh, our secrets. And of course, we wanted to use the same for Backstage, but we couldn't find anything, uh, any native um, API that could have used, uh, allowed us to do that, especially while running in, on ECS Fargate. So we built a wrapper around Backstage, which is started as the container starts, fetches the secret from Vault, populates the configuration uh, for Backstage, and then it starts the Backstage process. And this has proven to be very effective for us because since we deployed it, we never had to change it again while Backstage was evolving. Sometimes though, Getting your hand dirty uh, could be painful. An example for that is how we had to handle uh, the authentication. As I mentioned earlier, we are using AWS uh, load balancer to handle the authentication. And as we started to use Backstage, uh, there was already an API in place to handle the authentication via the application load balancer, but there was no documentation. Uh, so we reached out to the community of maintainers, which is always helpful, and we kind of find a solution running a dummy uh, signing component on the front end and handling the, the authentication, the identity uh, creation at the back end side. But as Backstage was evolving, as, it, as its API was evolving, we had to touch that code multiple times because it was breaking our pipeline. But it eventually got much better and we, and we are now using a native proxy signing page to handle that and that code, we haven't never had to touch it again. So great job there. We also love external integrations. Uh, we think that they are really powerful. Uh, external integrations allow you to consume uh, um, APIs or other sources that you already have in place without necessarily have to use catalog info format to populate your catalog. And we are using those to populate our catalog. As I mentioned earlier, we have uh, um, an API around the manifest. It's called the manifest API. And we use it to, uh, to ingest components and API into Backstage. We also have another internal API called the Identity API, and we consume it to produce users and groups. But the power of external integration aren't just that you can ingest what you already have in place. You can build automations around them. An example of the automation that we put in place is how we, for instance, uh, emit a custom tag whenever we identify that an entity have SLO uh, defined. So we are uh, uh, um, creating that tag so it's easier to filter the entities that already have an SLO in place. We haven't built a plugin to displace the SLO. And uh, also another uh, automation is how we automate the annotation that enables tech docs on the front end. In the zone, uh, we are using, uh, we are publishing our tech docs uh, to an AWS S3 bucket, and the engineering teams are already required to maintain a GitHub action workflow to publish uh, the tech docs. And we didn't want to ask them to also um, remember to go into the manifest and add an annotation there so that the front end could, uh, could enable the link to tech docs. So we decided to use the uh, at the external integration level we are checking if the tech docs exist on the Azure bucket. If, if it's there, then we emit the annotation. Otherwise, we don't. So the only thing that the engineering teams need to remember is they need to use a, a workflow to publish them. External integrations have allowed us to implement another principle, the principle that we wanted to adopt since the very beginning, which is not letting backstage becoming our single source of truth. 
Backstage is more like an aggregator for us. Uh, we, we ingest entities from GitHub, Manifest API that I mentioned earlier, Identity API, and other APIs that we will have in the futures. There is no entity that is only owned by Backstage. We don't register entities directly in Backstage. We configure them to be ingested. And this allows us to, to, uh, to rebuild Backstage from an empty state, and we will know that it will be repopulated with the data that we had in place before. Much easier to, the, to do a di uh, disaster recovery. We should, uh, you should also try to strive and implement raw friction onboarding. Automate as much as you can, and wh when you cannot automate it, provide copy and paste examples to the engineers so that it's easy for them to configure whatever is missing. As we started backstage, um, as we launched Backstage, all the engineering teams already found their services in their software catalog. And the only, th but for the, the aspects that were not configured, we were, we were pre um, pre uh, providing them config example that they could copy and paste. And not a good example for that, again, is how we are uh, um, hinting them how to populate tech docs. If we identify that the tech docs are not available, we provide them a, a, a snippet of code that they can copy and paste into their GitHub workflow to publish tech docs. And if they don't know what tech docs is, we provide a link to the documentation that we maintain explaining how to populate tech docs and uh, how good they are. You should also try to stay on top of it. Since it is very easy to get started to ba with Backstage, it's also easy to forget uh, to maintain it and, and let it run. And as with many products, uh, beside losing the latest features and security fixes, it you, will, you will find a lot of friction when you try to, to upgrade it. So our recommendation is to try and stay up to date with the monthly release. Since the introduction of the upgrade helper, it's much easier to do that but sometimes you will need to be, able, uh, to be ready to, to dig into the change log or even to the code, especially if you have customized some aspects of Backstage. Definitely stay in touch with the community. Uh, communi the community session is a great way of, uh, of knowing what's coming up and reach out to uh, the community of maintainers and, um, and adopters in Discord. They're, they're, they are really helpful there. So, we see some technical learnings quick cultural learnings, and then we all go for a beer. <laughs> In, uh, for us, Backstage is a tool uh, that um, can, uh, uh, we, we see Backstage as a tool that can influence our engineering culture. We think it, it could become a driver of, of uh, innovation and creativity, so it must be easy to contribute to it. And by contribution, I mean contribution internal and to, to, to the upstream uh, open source. Uh, but it wasn't really easy to contribute to, back, to the internal instance of Backstage, especially at the beginning. As I mentioned earlier, we use Vault uh, to, uh, for, to, to manage our secrets, and not, not all the engineering teams have access to our Vault namespace. So the moment they were cloning the GitHub repository, they couldn't start Backstage. So we have created a couple of scripts make, make file uh, targets that would allow them to set up backstage uh, whether they had access to the secrets or not. So if you are a member of the DX team, you can configure backstage with the access to secrets. What it will do for you, it will create a configuration file that makes use of the identity API and the manifest API using the secrets that you have involved and then you can run it and populate the catalog as if, if, as if it were in production. If you're not an engineer in the X team and you don't have access to those secrets, uh, you can configure backstage without access to secrets and it will populate the catalog, uh, uh, sorry, it will populate the configuration with uh, pointing backstage to some manifest files in the, the GitHub repositories. So the only secret that you need is your GitHub token to populate some example of, of the catalog. As we made it easier to contribute to Backstage, uh, we saw a first great contribution coming from uh, the engineering, uh, internal engineering community, a contribution that is very uh, helpful for us in, in the zone. 
and it's called the TV target uh, plugin. The TV, uh, the TV target plugin has been contributed by an engineer working in the living room domain, a domain that we at the X team don't know very well. And it contains information uh, for the packages that uh, can be installed on, on, our, on, the on the TV targets, such as Android TV, Apple TV, and whatnot. It contains information such as the countries in which the application is available, uh, minutes viewed per month for that type of application, how the application is pa uh, packaged, which features are available. It even allows you to, uh, to, to uh, edit feature flags. Many, uh, many additional informations that somebody in the DX team would have not come up with because we don't know the domain. So it is key that you enable engineers working on other domains to contribute to Backstage because they know what they need. They know what is very, uh, what's important to them and so what would make useful Backstage to them. You also need to be prepared to make your voice heard um, and engage with the, your internal engineering organization. Uh, it's incredible, but even after a year that we launched Backstage internally, we still hear from people that they haven't heard that Backstage was around. Oh, we need a service. It would be nice to have a service that tells us who owns a specific service. Well, we have it. It's Backstage. Haven't you heard about it? So yeah, uh, we, and we are trying to get being in touch with them con continuously. We are writing, we have an internal blog, blog post platform and we are posting there. Um, we post their new features announce announcements. Every time we add a new feature to our internal instance, we are posting there. We are hosting demos for teams. Uh, we are shouting out for contribution opportunities. So whenever we, we hear from people or from engineers that they have some something that they would want to work on and that might be done in Backstage, we try to hint them to go and contribute to our internal instance of Backstage. And we also try to attend uh, the town halls uh, that uh, our company has just to make, to spread the word that Backstage is around. And uh, I'd like to close with a, uh, a result of the first learning and it is that it's likely that someone else will benefit from the solution that you build. So give back. And there are multiple ways in, in which you can contribute back to, uh, to, up to Backstage Open Source. You can go to GitHub Issues and find a good first issue. Uh, contribute with bug, uh, bug fixes. Uh, documentation as well is a good way to contribute. Tutorial. Uh, in the zone, we have contributed a tutorial to, uh, to um, enable uh, AWS application load balancer authentication. And also with plugins. Uh, in the zone, we have created a few plugins. Uh, one is the, open, the GitHub pull request board that uh, us in the X and other uh, engineering teams in the zone are using during their standups to see what are the, the pull requests that they, they have opened, what are the statuses. We have contributed with a similar plugin, but for GitHub issues. Because at the, mom uh, at the moment, we have introduced tech docs and we allowed people to to comment on tech docs by opening a GitHub issue, we realized that nobody was looking at the GitHub issues. So we created this plugin, so it's there in Backstage. And uh, since uh, it was mentioned earlier, uh, soon we will also have a plugin uh, to do new relic analytic using the analytics API. And also, another great way to contribute is to give talks like I'm doing. Uh, and with that, I'd like to thank you for listening to me, and it was a great pleasure. Thank you, Marco. Thank you. I can take questions. Yeah. Even at the beer. Yeah. <laughs> Again, you make me run. Uh, thank you, Marco. Re really interesting, as usual. Uh, um, I know that one of the most recurrent questions is uh, tips and lessons learned from uh, real adopters. I mean, you're, this is the focus of your presentation and a lot of presentation. Would you mind to share some tips, that, I mean, some suggestions of what not to do with Backstage? Or, I mean, lesson learned uh, 
that you, you, you suggest not to repeat or to avoid uh, in your experience, of course? If you have some. Uh, yeah, well, I, I mentioned the trying to get every plugin uh, as, as much as you can because that is just uh, making it, uh, you lose the focus. So definitely something that you don't want to do. Uh, not doing in backstage. It's okay. another question. Let, let, okay, it's a hard Sorry. So let me let me change another if I can. I mean, uh, if you if you if you would be because now you have experience, if you would be uh, able to think about one missing feature of backstage, what you would like to see as next, uh, or what you would like to see as different. I mean, something different, easier. Dif not done, or what, what would you like to choose for the zone yourself, the developer and the team that you're working with? So I, I love data, and uh, one thing that I would like to see is more data, especially on the backend side of things. So being able to, uh, to monitor all, all of how backend is, is working, latencies and whatever, errors, all of that, if that could become easier, that would be great. And observability as well. Uh, we we also added uh, uh, just because we are working on the scaffolder now. Uh, we added uh, we did a bit a small contribution that would allow us to tell uh, to to see who is creating who is running the scaffolder just because it is changing something in in our GitHub repository. So we need to know that. So all of that those kind of uh, details uh, on the backend level is what I'd love to see. We talked a lot about uh, analytics and data collection and data consumption. Uh, I'm curious about uh, analytics of uh, backstage usage itself. What do we know about users, about their patterns, about their habits? Because uh, we, we mentioned a little bit like that some teams are using uh, backstage during their uh, stand-ups, uh, during onboarding of new team members. Another extreme is that uh, some people say, uh, t tell that they use uh, backstage for everything. So uh, what uh, kind of groups of uh, users are you identified and what data you're collecting and uh, any thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, so um, we have, uh, well, as we launched backstage, we were a bit blind on what, how it was used and then we introduced uh, G Google Analytics so what we see backstage being used is that that TV target plugin is, is used very frequently because it's something specific to, to what we do at the zone. And it's not only engineers that are using it. Now we have even prod, uh, people from the product team that are using it. So probably something that not only the engineers uh, need is something that would uh, make it, uh, is what is used most frequently. Then I can see the pull request plugin because it's a lot of team using it. And, uh, and then the catalog, it really depends because we have, I think we are around 2,000 entities right now and you have the granularity up to the, which entity the, uh, the, they are browsing. Uh, so yeah, the documentation as well is, is something that is really valuable, especially as more teams are migrating to tech docs because until now, uh, until backstage really, until we uh, launched backstage, all the documentation was hosted uh, in, in Confluence, and now teams are slowly but surely migrating into backstage, so that, that is getting a, a lot of uh, attention now. I hope that answered the question. Okay, thank you so much, Marco. Thank you.